Hello everyone. I have found some pretty interesting information regarding the NASA jetliner flying really low over California. Now the original article is from CBS Los Angeles News. They say, a large jetliner spotted flying low over the foothills Monday belonged to NASA, according to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. The large DC-8, painted white with a blue stripe and the NASA logo on the tail, was spotted flying over Altadena at the height of afternoon rush hour in the San Gabriel Valley. Now, CBS2 and CBS News Los Angeles anchorwoman Jasmine said she was one of the commuters who saw the plane flying by. It was scary a little bit. You didn't know if it was going to land, she said. Everyone kind of stopped in their cars looking up. It was really big and loud. NASA did not respond to calls to find out why the plane was flying so low. The plane evidently took off out of Palmdale and flew a 2,359-mile path into central California and across Nevada. It landed in Boise, Idaho at about 7 p.m. local time. The plane's call sign is NASA 817 and can be monitored via flightaware.com. Now, I pulled up the NASA's Armstrong fact sheet on the DC-8 jetliner. It is an airborne science laboratory. The DC-8 can carry 30,000 pounds of scientific instruments and equipment and can seat up to 45 experimenters and flight crew. I then found a tweet from around the same time by the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, which is a major NASA space research laboratory located approximately 6.5 miles northeast of Washington, D.C. They posted what's in the smoke while showing California, Oregon, and Nevada with the NASA DC-8 aircraft that was flying over volcanoes and near Ridgecrest and Casa Volcanic Field, also not far from the Garlic Fault, which the news stations has this headline. Ridgecrest aftershocks edging towards second biggest fault in California. And the other article says, aftershocks around Ridgecrest appear to be headed for Garlic Fault could cause magnitude 8 quake. Anyways, I did further research on the DC-8 and managed to dig this up from 1997, straight off of NASA's site. Now listen carefully. NASA sensors provide safe platform for volcano studies. NASA scientists are developing and using a variety of airborne and spaceborne remote sensing tools to study potentially dangerous volcanoes that could one day threaten populated areas in the United States and around the world. A number of domestic volcanoes are being studied, including Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier in Washington, Mount Shasta and Lassen Peak in California. We are using radar data to study the dormant lava domes in Long Valley, California, so we can understand how lava is placed during eruptions. Understanding the eruptive process helps us know where lava will flow and that has bearing on the hazards that pose, pose to the nearby communities, including the Mammoth Mountain ski areas. By combining the radar data with information from scanning laser altimeters, we are now tracking changes at the summits of Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier that will document the impact of erosion, climate, and other factors on the topography and stability of large volcanoes, said Dr. James B. Gavin. Chief Scientist for the Shuttle Laser Altimeter at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, GSFC. These laser altimeters also have successfully measured the flank topography of volcanoes beneath their tree canopies. This is important because many of the most dangerous volcanoes are heavily vegetated and their local relief must be known to accurately predict the path of their flows. In recent months, AirSAR, ACE, and TIMS were part of a cadre of scientific instruments on board a NASA DC-8 aircraft that captured images of the Manum volcano within hours of an eruption on an island off the north coast of Papua New Guinea. Now, it says the airborne instruments help us map the topography from a safe distance. The data over Manum were collected as a target of opportunity, and the top topographic or topographic, sorry if I pronounced these words wrong, um, data set will serve as a valuable baseline for studies about future changes to the volcano, said Ellen, the AirSAR science, it's A-I-R-S-A-R, -R, so AirSAR science coordinator at JPL. Now, we use the thermal infrared data to study volcanoes in three ways, she says. The first is to map ground temperatures, which we can relate to geothermal phenomena. The second is to map variations in the composition of lava flows, and the third is to map the sulfur dioxide in volcanic plumes. Now, Tim's data are useful for studying volcanic or volcanoes because thermal infrared remote sensing is the only practical means of obtaining virtually 
instantaneous maps of dynamic phenomena such as the distributions of temperatures on the ground or sulfur dioxide in a plume. Such data are of great use in monitoring volcanoes, where changes in ground temperatures or sulfur dioxide emissions can signal impending activity. JPL's Digital Image Animation Laboratory, DIAL, turns the scientific data into three-dimensional video animations and other images. These visualizations can range from the simple, such as the use of color to combine data sets, to the complex, such as simulated flights through the data. The basic objectives, objectives of data visualization are, the give, are to give scientists new perspectives into complex data sets and to permit them to communicate their findings in a format that is both compelling and accessible. The dial is the best known for visualizations of planetary data sets of Venus and Mars, but visualizations have been produced for a variety of volcanoes, such as Mount Rainier the Long, and the Long Valley Caldera in the Mammoth Mountains of California and others. Now, the most recent addition to this series is a simulated flight over Mount St. Helens that was created by combining Tim's data with a high-resolution digital elevation map. Now, remember, this article that I just read from was from, I think, 1997, I said. Let me go up and look. Um, yeah, 1997. Uh, so there you have it, though. Both NASA's DC-8 and Goddard flying over California volcanoes together within the last few days, and confirmation that both the DC-8 and Goddard play a role in mapping volcanic activity. It can't get any more clear than that. The information is there, it just takes some digging and research. There is a high possibility that they are monitoring the volcanic activity there on the West Coast. We will continue to keep our eyes on that. I also want to add something that I saw yesterday from a very credible source. I absolutely love this guy's work. So this is Ben, and he says, Possible uplift near Ridgecrest and Caso Volcanic Field. It seems the ground may be swelling in Ridgecrest, California, where all those strong quakes were occurring. GPS data is shown. What is going on? So I'm going to link his video below. You should watch it and see for yourself. Great work. The data doesn't lie. And I've recently downloaded Swarm, and I'm trying to learn how to correctly read it. He also has some helpful videos on that if you want to monitor all that yourself. Okay, anyways, eyes on the West Coast for volcanic activity. Anyone that's been following my work and research knows that I've been talking about the volcanic activity in California all this year. This has been a really big concern of mine. Now, it's really heating up, and it's building a lot of pressure. I've been saying that all year, but I mean, the more and more we go, the more and more pressure it's building. It's just getting to the point that I think something's going to give. And we're probably going to see a lot more talk about volcanic activity on the West Coast. More and more people will talk about it. This will become more and more a topic of conversation. Now, I know I said that a few months ago, that this will start to be in everyone's topic of conversation. Volcanic activity on the West Coast. Um, I think that is starting to happen. Let's just keep watching the activity. There is many factors to watch and many things you can keep an eye on that would hint at possible activity. So eyes on this and just be aware. Stay aware and prepared. Much love.